Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a powerful mini PC that'll be hitting the market in the next month or two. Right now, this is known as the MX5600, and it did take me a while to get my hands on this because this is really a pre-production unit. But we will be seeing a lot of these mini PC companies on AliExpress come out with a PC that's going to be very similar to this, powered by the same chip. And that chip is actually the brand new Ryzen 5 5600H. They'll also be offering a 5600U model, but uh, when it comes down to it, the H variant is definitely going to be the way to go because it does run at a much higher TDP. This unit here did come with a 65 watt power supply, and as you can see, this is bare bones. I actually got this directly from the manufacturer in China. And you will be seeing these rebranded by other companies in the coming months once these are released to the public. But I really wanted to get my hands on a 5600H powered mini PC, so here it is. I'm going to be installing 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. That's the maximum speed, but this will support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. You can install a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom cover here as long as you have the adapter, but unfortunately I don't have the cable adapter, so I'm just going to go with an M.2 SSD. I went with a cheaper silicon power 256 gigabyte drive. When it comes to the cooling system in here, it's very similar to an Intel NUC. We have a copper plate with aluminum fins and a single blower style fan. Now the information that I'm getting right now is that version 2 of this PC will be a bit taller just to accommodate a larger cooler inside of here to keep everything nice and chilly. Because after all, the Ryzen 5 5600H can reach up to 45 watts and that's exactly what it's set at in this PC. It definitely needs a bit of a bigger cooler because this thing can get quite loud when that fan hits 100%. When it comes to I.O., up front here we have two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, a single USB Type-C port, and it does do display out. There's not much going on around the sides here, but on the left-hand side there is a micro SD card slot. And around back we have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, at least that's what they're stating it is, two more USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, two full-size HDMI ports, and our power in. So like I mentioned, right now this is known as the MX5600H. The regular U version will be known as the MX5600U. For this one here, we have the Ryzen 5 5600H up to 45 watts, 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.3 with a max clock of 4.2. Built-in Radeon 7 graphics at 1800 MHz. It will support up to 64 GB of SODIMM RAM running at 3200 MHz and it also supports an M.2 SSD up to 1 terabyte. So what I've done here is just install Windows 10 Pro, and in the past I've actually been able to mess around with a laptop with a 5600H, but that was paired up with a GTX 1650. I've never had the chance to just mess with a mini PC with this specific Zen 3 CPU, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. In this video, we're just going to check out the general performance. We're going to run some benchmarks, test out some PC games, and finally some emulation. I'm also going to take a look at power consumption from the wall and the heat generated by this new APU. All right, so here it is. I've been up and running for about three hours. I've already run some tests. I've uh, installed everything, updated everything. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 5 5600H, 6 cores, 12 threads, that 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that I added and the built-in Radeon 7 graphics. Now I always like to check just to make sure that these graphics are running at full speed. We'll put a load on them, check those sensors, and we're at 1800 megahertz. And through my testing so far, it's been able to run at 18 all day. One thing I'll be doing through my testing is monitoring the CPU temp and just running Cinebench R23, we did hit 93 degrees Celsius, but I've tested a couple games so far and we don't reach anywhere near that while gaming. That was just maxing out all six cores and 12 threads with that 10 minute test. But it did thermal throttle while running that. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in. Unfortunately, it's not AX, but uh, I've done a little bit of web browsing and some 4K video playback. The 5600H is gonna handle all of this just fine. Uh, I would recommend plugging into ethernet since we only have AC, but it'll definitely get you by. Everything loads up nice and quick. So far, overall, the experience has been great with this little setup. If you wanted to do some photo editing, some light video editing, document editing, this 5600H will handle it. Now, the first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks, so let's check out what we got there. Looking pretty strong with Geekbench 5, single core, 1362, multi, 6850. Moving over to Cinebench R23, we got a total multi-core score of 9,711. And I gotta say, during this test, it did thermal throttle. It hit 93 degrees Celsius. So we definitely need a better cooler on this unit. 3D Mark Night Raid, 15,404. Fire Strike, 3,652. And finally, 
Time Spy with a 1,353. So these benchmarks aren't bad for a mobile chip with integrated graphics, but how does it really handle gaming? First up, we have Overwatch, which I completely understand is an older, very well-optimized game, but I still love testing it. We're at 1080p medium settings, and by the end of this run here, I had an average of 108 FPS. Moving over to GTA 5, 1080p normal settings, and when it comes to these new Zen 3 APUs, it really does a great job with this game here, and as you can see, it's fully playable here, but we are at normal settings. Still, 1080p, looking pretty good for integrated graphics. This little chip did way better than I thought it would with Injustice 2. Here it is, running at 1080p, low settings, and every once in a while you will see it dip down to around 58, but it's still holding really steady at 60. I personally wouldn't notice those dips if I didn't have that FPS counter on, so yeah, I'd say this is fully playable here. I'll never stop fighting. The hunt invigorates me. Forza Horizon 4, 900p with a medium-low mix. Now this will run at 1080p at low or very low settings, but I still wanted to up those graphics a bit, and it just can't do it at 1080p medium. But we got an average of 72 FPS with these settings here. Dirt 5 is just one of those really hard games to run on these integrated graphics, so we're at 900p low settings, we got an average of 47 FPS. Not great, and even at 720p low, we can't hit a constant 60 with it. Doom Eternal, 900p, low settings. Initially going into this stage, it was looking really good, but as soon as everybody got on screen and there was a lot of stuff going on, it did dip on down. We got an average of 51 FPS. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, we're at 100% resolution scale, we got an average of 34. And that's really just the way it is on these mobile APUs with this game right now. Now it's time to see how this 5600H handles emulation, and I gotta say, it does an amazing job. Here's Wii U using the SimU emulator, Breath of the Wild, 1080p, Vulcan back in, it'll run at 30 all day long. Unfortunately, we can't hit 60 at 1080p, it's around 54 to 55 FPS, but this still looks really good, and I don't mind playing this game at 30. PS3 using RPCS3, 720p, Vulcan back in, here's Skate 3, looking really good, we're at a constant 60, now this isn't going to run something like God of War 3, but for most of the PS3 library that works with the RPCS3 emulator, you should have a great time. And the final thing I wanted to test here was Xbox 360 using the Xenia emulator, and this really does take advantage of NVIDIA GPUs, and we're working with a Radeon integrated GPU here, so it's not great. I also went ahead and measured the total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, we're at about 11 watts. Average gaming, 49 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall with that 65 watt power adapter was 68 watts. By the time this gets released, they're definitely going to have to up the wattage on that power supply. Maybe like an 85 watt would be sufficient for this unit. When it comes to CPU temps, at idle we're around 38 degrees Celsius. On average gaming, 74, and the maximum that I got this to hit was 93. And really it just leveled off at 93 with that Cinebench R23 test because it was thermal throttling the CPU. So overall, I do think this little PC with that 5600H is a great performer given that we only have integrated graphics. 
Six cores, 12 threads, I think this thing is doing a great job. And by the time other companies get these in their possession and start rebranding them, they're definitely going to have to up the wattage on that power supply, and I really do hope they come up with a better thermal solution. Even just, you know, making this a bit taller and raising those fins up on the cooler would help out a lot, but I'd like to see those temps a little lower while we're gaming. So in the next few months, we will see a lot of these mini PCs hitting the market with the 5600H, and I think it's doing a pretty decent job the way it is right now. There will be some more optimization, some better coolers, maybe different cases, but in the end, I do think that this APU here is an awesome option for these tiny PCs. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I'll definitely keep you guys up to date. And if I come across something that you can purchase right now with this same chip and the same form factor, I will leave a link in the description. So definitely keep an eye out. If there's anything else you want to see tested or running with this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.